I'm photojournalist James Long with Fox 31. I'm standing here in front of a beautiful mural in downtown Denver. Art is something that's important to me. One of the arts I really love is photography. I've spent this past year putting together different stories about different Colorado photographers. First, we're gonna look at Noelle Wood. She's a portrait photographer in Longmont, Colorado, who specializes in fairy tale portraits. You know, I think because photography is so prevalent these days and anyone can be a photographer with a camera, I think that's what spurred me to really try something different and really just kind of go outside of the box and take a risk. My name is Noelle Wood and I'm a photographer. This past fall, I pretty much decided I'm just gonna start doing me in my shoots and just put it out there and just see what happens. When I started seeing that people actually wanted this type of shoot, this enchanted style shoot, I started offering it to everyone. Anyone and everyone that wanted to come in and create could do it. And I think that's what ended up, you know, making my stuff stand out is because it's it's not the norm. It's not what people are really doing. Today we're doing uh, a couple very different looks. The first one is basically I titled it Ostara, which is the pagan term for the equinox. So she is basically a human representation of spring. Yeah, and do um, do a little chin up if you can. Beautiful. Wow. I feel like this shoot offers people a chance to kind of step outside of themselves for a day, maybe be someone else for a day, or even bring out something that's inside of them that they don't get to show on a regular basis. The second shoot is kind of the opposite of that. It's going to be kind of kind of dark, kind of moody. You know, you could say it's inspired a little bit by the Maleficent character. I don't necessarily see it as a villain. She is in her throne or lair of these these tall reeds and I've got her up on a ladder so she's you know a good 10 feet tall um, just to give that overwhelming like sense of strength and power. Wow that's it. Work it just keep moving that's perfect because here it comes. I would say about half of the storytelling actually happens in post-production for me. But in Photoshop, that's when I really can kind of get creative with the story. And I think through color and light, you can really change the mood of the photo and tell a different story. Noelle is definitely a storyteller with her enchanted portraits. Our next artist is Johnny Edward, who specializes in the art of street photography. Let's take a look. When I was a teenager, I started shooting street in Chicago. Um, I've always been really driven by kind of the heartbeat and the rhythm of the urban landscape. I think for me, one of the things that really draws me to street photography, probably the, the core tenet or facet, is being able to capture um, the beauty or the magic or the poetry in something that's otherwise mundane. Hey, nothing life is for free. I'd love to take your photo, though. Yeah, that's you don't mind. Fine. I appreciate it, man. Here you go. We're creating an experience, and our art emanates from that experience. Great. You know, we all walk by these different scenes, we walk down these streets on a daily basis, and it's so easy to kind of have your eyes closed to the world around you. So for me, it's really about bringing light um, in a different perspective to the things that people are exposed to on a daily basis. He was getting off the mall ride, I was still smoking cigarettes at the time, and he kind of gestured uh, to ask me for a smoke, and I gave him a smoke, and I asked him if I could take his portrait, and he kind of looked at me. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, uh, you know, and I thought that I had overstepped a bounds with him. And he kind of laughed and then gestured to his ears and it became clear to me that he was deaf. Might if I take a photo? When I'm working with these specific populations, I'll stop and, you know, give them a compliment. One thing that I love doing is a lot of these people that I've met out here, they have great smiles or they have great eyes or they have a rad dog or they have something. And so I'll give them a compliment and introduce myself. Hey, so I'm Johnny Edward. I'm a street photographer. Um, all of you have really interesting faces. Nice to meet you as well. I just wanted to know if I could take a few portraits, if you'd be open to that. Perfect. Only after there's that connection do I ask to potentially create their portrait. One more. Oh, awesome. 
awesome. Yeah, this looks great. I love interacting with new people and I love being able to connect with those people and learn a little bit about them, especially those who are struggling to try and find out how they got to where they are and where they came from. Uh, I think it's profound to be able to interact with someone on that level and learn about their life. Like I said, for me, it really just comes down to searching for meaning, you know, searching for substance, searching for significance. And when I find that, um, I want to share that. Johnny Edward definitely captures the people in the streets of Denver. You never know where you're going to find your next Colorado artist. In this case, he's an auto mechanic. Nick Luna works on cars up in Greeley, Colorado. Let's take a look at his art of dry plate photography. Bring this down to my height, as everyone says. When you're doing diagnostic on a car, you have to think outside the box constantly. You have no idea what could be wrong, especially when you get into electricity and drivability, and it could be the weirdest thing. And that kind of thinking outside the box forces me to look at the world differently when I take my photographs. How can I photograph this differently to tell a different story? My name's Nick Luna, and I'm a mechanic by day and a dry plate photographer by night. What I absolutely love about photography is you can give 12 photographers the same camera, the same lighting, and the same model, even the same backdrops and area to shoot in, and every single one of them is going to take different photos. They say large format photographers do it under the dark cloth. The story behind those photos, the, uh, the setting, the emotion, everything is going to be completely different. I want to bring the model as, as right in the center of the frame as possible. Three, two, one. And I get where the whole misconception that photography steals your soul comes from now. Because you're put so much into the photo. Every single one of them has different imperfections, different flaws in the image. I mean, they're not, there's no machine to do this. Every one of them's different. My favorite part. This, this is a film holder. There's two shots in here. If you look at the size of that and you think of, you know, an SD card that holds 64 gigs, thousands of photos, and it's size of a, a stamp. People know what stamps are still, right? <laughs> that when it's in the developer tray and it hits that two minute mark and the image starts to appear. You see it start to appear? Almost feels like magic. 45 seconds. And then we'll throw it in the fixed bath. And then four minutes in the fixed bath, we can turn the light on and examine our images. When you think, you know, you, you put this, this emulsion on a piece of metal you know, how, how clear can it come out? My first images weren't, weren't clear at all. They were, they were awful. But the results I've been getting, you know, since putting in lots of hours and lots of time with the camera and with the lights and in the dark room and trying new methods, the photos, just, there's nothing like it. Nick Luna definitely puts an art to his portrait work. Our next artist is J.J. Constantine. He's the next upcoming fashion photographer in Denver. Let's take a look at his work. Oh, fashion can be very inspiring, very empowering to people. Now we're talking. I literally have seen people transform when they put different outfits. I've seen them become more confident, more empowered, more strong, more just because they had this beautiful outfit on. My name is Jacek Jarzombek. Uh, the nickname JJ Constantine became because nobody can pronounce or spell it. I love photography, all kinds of photography, but the, there was always something special about working with people. And I, I, I'm, I think I'm pretty good in capturing their emotions and uh, you know, always try to get something more out of the person. JJ is amazing. Yeah, I hope I get some credit for it. I met him working um, on a fashion production here in Denver. I mean, I, I'm pro I probably heard him before I saw him. One more time. <laughs> no, don't do it. <laughs> he's hard to miss um, if he's in a room. I mean, he's definitely has, he has the, the biggest personality. I don't think this is your better side, but whatever you say. The only competition worth having is when you try yourself. And I truly, truly believe that. When you become model, when you do modeling, when, when, you, when you become that model 24-7, you also gain that confidence. And regardless of how your modeling career is gonna go, 
that confidence you gain in yourself, that self-belief, it will help you in life, in everything you do, in every job interview, in every, every place you want to go to. It's, it's going to open doors for you. When I shot the lookbook for a designer from New York, and he, having him contact me and thank me there we go. for an amazing lookbook that everybody asked him how much did it cost him, that's what kind of validates you because you know you did your job right. You know you, what he was hoping for, you delivered. And that's the most important. Fashion scene in Denver is interesting. There are some really, really talented people in Denver. Uh, one of the probably best uh, hairstylists, the designers, I can call it, in, uh, in North America, not just US. It's in Denver, Charlie Price. He's amazing. He won multiple uh, North American hairstylist awards. Beautiful, that was great. Fashion, that picture has to have a, has to have a reason, has to, has to portray something about the designer or a brand you're working with. It, it has to uh, invoke uh, some kind of feeling in the audience. Uh, it, it has to draw them to basically, when they're flipping through page of the magazine, they, it has to make them stop and say, oh, who is that? You know, it's all of those aspects are important. It's not just about the pretty picture. It's it has to be more than than just pretty face. JJ's work definitely brings a light to the Denver fashion scene. Our next artist spends a lot of time in the bedroom. Her photography has been labeled as being raunchy, maybe even a bit crude. But what she does in her art form is bring empowerment to women. Let's take a look at photographer Brooke Summer. I believe that boudoir is for every woman, regardless of age, size, background. It is something that gives them an opportunity to see something in themselves <laughs> that they don't normally see. My name is Brooke Summer of Brooke Summer Photography, and I am a boudoir photographer. I didn't even know it was a thing. I love that. At first I started with families and I did weddings. And as soon as I saw that everyday women could get photos that were similar to the Victoria's Secret photos, turn onto this side of your body. I was so excited body. with your arm extended, yeah. It's interesting, I can tell that my work has changed over the years depending on my own life. And when I had my daughter about three years ago, I saw my work change into Empowering women to remember their value is not based on what they look like, what they make, or anything in between. It is based entirely on the fact that they're human. Oh my gosh, do you rather chin up a little bit? I have found that people feel comfortable with me. That gift is actually something that helps my clients feel very comfortable. And once they start to see the photos, I love it. And they start to realize that they look like the models too when they have the right posing and lighting. They start to relax and feel confident and feel beautiful. Bring this elbow close to me. Yep, and look down this way. Yes. As a woman, it definitely gives me a confidence boost. It makes me feel like I'm empowering. She's always made me feel like I can accomplish anything. I have taken a lot of hell for my photography. I've been told I ruin marriages. I've been told that I tempt men with my website. Um, sort of super, super, super straight, bring your feet towards me. Um, which is hilarious to me because ultimately it's not about guys. It's not about the, the sex appeal of it at all. Now that is a beautiful side effect. <laughs> this hand, bring up here, it won't be in the photo. Ultimately, it's not about that. It's about realizing and embracing your power as a woman and knowing that you're not only powerful and confident, but that you're valuable just because you're you. Brooke's portraits are definitely for the women in the photo, not so much the men. Our next Colorado artist is a photographer herself, but she's also the founder of an event called Dragutant. This event, it brings children and kids of all ages to truly be themselves. Tonight, we get an opportunity to look forward to some veteran drag performances. We get to look forward to uh, people taking the stage for the very first time. That We just get to see them live their best life and their true life uh, on stage. I'm very excited and kind of scared. I think these kids are going to surprise you. 
I think these kids have a whole lot more to bring to the stage than we ever expected. We are going to have you two and you probably go over the walk, like how to walk, how to really work that runway. You know, my thoughts and my excitement for this specific show is this is for the future generations. I mean, we're witnessing history or history in the making. These kids are, you know, ages, I think, 6 to 16, and they're doing drag and showing some of us that have been doing it for a very long time up. All right, you got this, baby. To see this come together and to see these kids put on these faces. Yeah. And they try to look so fierce, but there's these big smiles. And my mom heart just is overwhelmed. I am very excited. As they're growing, this is sort of, you know, the way of expressing themselves that, you know, your, your options here are, are to support them or to not support them. I, I don't see that as really an option. Hey, Mr. Bootsy, why don't you drop me a B? Are you guys ready to meet these queens? It's a self-expression that they have to do it. To, it's part of them. To have parents actually support this. It's no different than if your kid liked soccer, you'd be at the soccer field every weekend. You'd be there cheering. If your kid liked violin, you would be listening to squeaky violins and going to school concerts. The greatest thing is, is after today, you guys are going to have a sisterhood that you will never not have. Whether you guys remain super best friends forever or not, this is a group of a collection of an amazing group of individuals. We're very supportive. Um, Gabby transitioned when she was around five years old, so it's been a huge part of our lives and uh, of her development, actually. The things we do, uh, whether you know going going to dance or soccer or baseball or whatever, this is this is just one of those kinds of things that you, you're doing for your kids. I think people don't really understand what um, drag is and what drag culture is. I think that it's much more than people think it is. It's like one of the most loving, supportive environments I've ever been in. That's how I hope to raise my kids, you know, to be open and let never have them being judgmental of other people and how they want to live their lives. Seeing the people who have had 100% support from their parents for the whole time versus kids who've been kicked out of their house for being gay, you can definitely see that difference. It is so vital for parents to be supportive of their family because of the fact that it allows us to be able to grow into ourselves without having to get through all of the hard stuff that comes with negative experiences. I think you have to walk a mile in somebody else's shoes and if you can't fit the heel then you can't really like judge what somebody else is doing. I think it's exciting and scary the way that our world is right now and it's really sad that people are so vocal with their hate on a lot of different realms and it really saddens me that our world is at that place but I know with these kinds of events that our world is changing and that we are making a difference. I'm sorry that you are either scared or don't know what's going on, but a lot of times all you need is just a little bit of education, a little bit of glitter, and life can be okay. And this is the final thing I'm gonna say. Are you guys coming back next year? <laughs> Draggy Ton is all about expression, and expression is what art is all about. I hope you enjoyed this segment. I'm James Long, thanks for watching.